Hey dear audience, hope you would be fine. Today we are going to discuss Thomas Hardy. Uh, we will be majorly discussing two things in this lesson, in this uh, video. First would be the biographical notes of Thomas Hardy and later on we would be discussing his contribution towards the development of English novel. Before going to proceed forward, first we have to keep in mind that Thomas Hardy was born in 1840 and he died in 1928. So he has seen the two different centuries, the Victorian century and the Edwardian century, means 20th, first, 20th century. He lived a very long life and see the world passing through different circumstances. Queen Victoria's era, which was a very uh, sort of traditional era, which was very stick sticking to the values and the 20th century which was the age of change and uh, new inventions in the science so Thomas Hardy has seen at the same time the traditions and the development of the science as well he himself was very much uh, impressed by the scientific thoughts and particularly the theory of Darwin's theory of survival of the fittest and the origin of species so uh, there is a lot uh, which can be talked about Thomas Hardy but we would be uh, briefly discussing his uh, uh, biographical notes and some major uh, sections of his novels he was born in 1840 at the higher Bengtrum the fictional where uh, he has been using this uh, place as a castle bridge in her in his novel Coster, uh, mayor, mayor of the Coster Bridge as well his father ran a masonry business means he was a very architect type and he also played the music for local church his father his mother was a cook and servant maid in 1848 means after the eight, eight years of his birth Thomas Hardy attended village school at Bockhampton his mother encourages him to read his first books and he visits London for the first time. Thomas was a sensitive and intelligent child. He progressed diligently through his studies. It is interesting to share with you that Thomas Hardy, uh, it is said, um, really it is uh, a very uh, uh, fact and it's, I, I have read in some book that when Thomas Hardy was born, uh, his doctor, considering him as a dead child, thrown him outside. But uh, after some time, a nurse passed to uh, th that corridor, and she come. Uh, she came to that waste stage where Thomas Hardy was lying. She uh, viewed that the child was uh, alive. She brought the boy back, and he was uh, later on cared by the doctor. So. Uh, the the very uh, initial charge which uh, which is labeled against Thomas Hardy is that of the pessimist. I usually used to say that uh, what would be the philosophy of such a person who, who even his on his birth has been thrown in the waste uh, waste bin. So how he would be looking the life. So in 1849 to 1856, his mother was determined he, he should be well educated and sent him to the school at Dorsetshire to learn Latin, uh, French and German. Uh, by this we come to know that Thomas Hardy was a man of, of very common or normal lineage. His parent was not any bureaucrat, he was a very simple man and his mother was also a very common lady but both of them his father and his mother were having a very strong tendency towards learning towards making him educated later on in Thomas Hardy's novel we see we see that all his major characters are very much interested in studying mostly of his characters are uneducated but even though they are uneducated but they have a strong tendency towards learning uh, education and new knowledge so that's very autobiographical of Thomas Hardy in 1856 and 61 apprenticed to one of his father's employer 
started writing verse. His first poem was Dromaecilium. He reads Darwin's Origin of Species, 1859, in which uh, from where he has draws his major philosophy towards life. His morbid curiosity led him to witness several hangings. Later on, he has uh, uh, written this phenomena, uh, uh, this situation in his novel The Test. The most memorable to Thomas Hardy was that of the Martha Browns who killed her husband in a crime of the passion, which he has represented in the this memory inspired the test of the Rebovilla. 1862 to 1867, he moves to London where he worked for an ecclesiastical architect, attended operas and the theatres, explores London, visits National Gallery almost daily. It's very important that he used to read extensively Spencer, Hagelay, J.S. Mills, P.B. Shelley, Browning, Scott, and Swinburne. All these were authors from him. He was very much impressed. In 1865, published his first article, How I Built Myself a House at the Chambers Journal. Beginnings Spend, sending poems to the periodicals but they were rejected because agonistic means he, he, he used to be very agonistic means contradictory to the social established values so definitely publishers were not going to destroy their business by writing against the values established social values 1867 to 1870 returns to Dor uh, Dorchester begins his first novel now the last we have lost we are not able to have this one the poor man and the lady many have an uh, now we see that thomas hardy where he is different from the other novels novelist uh, hardy was attempting something very different from the aim, aims of the most novels for example in uh, in that Victorian era, we see uh, George Eliot, uh, Jane Austen uh, as the uh, Thackeray as the major novelist uh, who, who were practicing uh, uh, on the uh, novel and experimenting. But all these have major themes of uh, love, domestic issues. Uh, for example, Jane Austen's novel Pride and Prejudice or even her six novels, they are majorly dealing with the domestic life and the issues of marriage and uh, all that settlement at home. But Thomas Hardy takes the uh, characters something beyond that. Uh, we would be discussing in this one, uh, in this slide, that Thomas Hardy considers that uh, characters are the product of the ex some external situations and they, that may be the weather, the season, and a traditional craft. Means these things, the weather, season, and the traditional craft have a significant impact on the personality of his characters. So he has drawn the character from mere uh, persons to, to something extended level, uh, characters who are very linked uh, with some external forces, with some social society. So in this way he has connected his characters with a wider spectrum of the outside world. Uh, the art of the novelist who sets from to display human beings in the context of social life must be one of the constant differentiation and discrimination between the characters. But social life, as we find it depicted variously in Jane Austen, Thackeray, Trollope, George Eliot, scarcely exists in Hardy. Hardy, uh, Hardy takes the hum his characters at a very higher level. His characters st stand in relation to other things, means the weather, the seasons, and a traditional craft. These things are having a great impact rather than the social issues. He sees his characters much as Scott does his. First in his generic aspect, 
this because he is anything else Gabriel Oik is a uh, is a very good shepherd for example his novel the uh, for from the madden crowd its main character is a Gabriel Oik so as he was coming from uh, a very countryside area so uh, Hardy established here that he uh, that, that Gabriel Oik was a very good good nature nature because he was coming such a countryside which was the land of the pure hearted people Tess is the date he made uh, Tess was a country girl uh, she, she, she was residing at the countryside but suddenly someone she uh, his her family came to know that they are having a very noble lineage and they got uh, very boosted on it uh, and later on she moves uh, she is seduced by uh, his her close relative Alec later on she kills Alec and uh, move uh, marry to Angel that's a long story we are going to discuss it later individually as such is not at all what he is after what concerns him most is the human beings in their response to the deep-rooted passions uh, means for there are some deep rooted passions and the other is one uh, 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 means Thomas Hardy's characters are fighting with their uh, inner nature and the external environment uh, being all the sexual love loss of faith all these are the uh, dominant uh, it means deep rooted passions means sex love and loss of faith are the very establish uh, themes on which Thomas Hardy usually writes on. George Eliot to stress for beyond orthodox Christianity. The individual's responsibility for his or her actions for her means they usually George Eliot or William Makepeace Thack they, they have been dealing with the man in relation to the good and bad and morality and the Christianity means man seems to be center center moving for example in that character of uh, in the, that mill on the floors we see that what's the concept of good and bad and uh, what was against against Christianity was not appreciated by the readers as well but here in the Thomas Hardy we see that he is not preaching any morality he is revealing a consistent war between the man and the nature for example here I would extend my argument to a length that if we see that uh, man has to fight consistently with the natural forces for example if we say that uh, uh, wind uh, sorry uh, if we take uh, this fire as a natural uh, phenomena uh, so uh, it, it is also beneficial for man but man is all has always been afraid of this fire if we take the weather as a natural phenomena so we, we see that uh, weather is only harsh or it's cold it's very uh, warm or cold so the whole life man has to work against this uh, uh, hard weather means uh, very hot warm weather or the very cold weather so all his life uh, uh, remains in struggle against the natural forces similarly is the case of the water though water is very beneficial for man but always he has to remain you would have come to know with the f situation of resistance as you know that the phenomena of resistance makes us possible to move on mm, without resistance we cannot move but in in walking uh, in the phenomena of walking in the situation of walking we have to overcome the resistance of the nature that's a natural phenomena for her the choice between right and wrong was open for every human being to make the basis of her ethics in the belief in the freedom of the will but Thomas Hardy is not a moralist Hardy was scarcely a moralist at all because in his universal morals were being 
besides the point between the forces of nature and the man's aspirations. There could be no reconciliation, means uh, Hardy was of the view that nature and man's aspirations are in uh, opposite uh, contests and in trust, so they are eternally opposed to one another. Uh, and from human point of view, the working of nature against nature must appear hostile and malignant. Thomas Hardy was a devoted reader of philosophy, scientific text, and Bible, and the Greek literature, and he incorporated much of his knowledge into his own works as well. One of the most profound influences of his thinking was Charles Darwin's theory of uh, survival of the fittest and origin of species, particularly Darwin's in hand, emphasis on chance and luck. Thomas Hardy's all character, mostly almost all characters, move around this phenomenon, this situation of fate and chance and luck in the evolution. And through, though brought up to the belief in God, Hardy struggled with the loss of faith suffered by many of his contemporaries. Actually, this situation, the uh, time frame in which Hardy was living, that was a very uncertain time. So, uh, if we say that it was very difficult for anyone to have a strong belief on Christianity or on the, on the, on the religion after reading the book of uh, Charles Darwin, The Origin of Species, it is said that origin of species has basically uh, distracted the man from the religion. So, he increasingly turned to the science for answers about man's place in the universe. One of the Hardy's central concern in all of his writing was the problem of modernity. Miss Thomas Hardy take modernity not as a uh, progress of human soul but as a situation where man has lost his following things moral values in modernity man has lost his moral values in modernity man has lost his uh, traditions and in the um, uh, in in the in the sense of uh, modernity man has lost his religion as well so that was rapidly more and more industrial. One of his projects as a writer was to create an account of life in swiftly changing Dorsetshire as it had once been. For example, now we come to the uh, some of his novels uh, in which he has been creating this situation that his characters move from village life to the industrial or the city life and adopts and try to adopt a modern life in the adopt in the such adaptation they lose their uh, roots from the origin and ultimately they are destructed and destroyed he has particularly interested in the rituals and the histories of that part of england as well as the dialect of its locals. Means Thomas Hardy's characters majorly speaks the uh, uh, dialect of uh, Dorsetshire. The title, For From the Madding Crowd, suggests avoidance of life of a city. Modernized, almost all his novels uh, present this. Means Hardy's characters are not happy in the, happy in the city life and they, they are not willing to adopt the modern uh, modernized governments and the crowds and the industry in it. Hardy tries to fashion a portrait of what he saw as an endangered way of life. Means Hardy considers that uh, moving towards modernity, man may lose his life as well, and to create a snapshot for future generations. Ultimately, uh, Hardy considers that modernity may threaten the existence of man and future. So far as his con novels are concerned, now we would be briefly discussing his novels and their major content and some um, a very brief overview of the novels. Hardy wrote 14 novels in all, means 12 in serial forms in, he used to write in series, and three volumes of short story. They are all in very different ways, love stories, concerned with the love, means uh, sex as well. 
Thomas Hardy in preface to the uh, Jude the Obscure. This Jude the Obscure novel is, is, is his last novel after such criticism as he was uh, writing against established values, social values of the Christianity. So he, it, this novel was so much criticized that after writing Jude the Obscure uh, in, in influence of in view of such criticism he left writing novel but he defines the um, sex as the strongest passions known to humanity sex was a subject that no publisher of that time definitely as, as i already have talked that uh, uh, sex was such a prohibited theme uh, while writing in the novel and hardy was going to write it on so uh, uh, writing on such theme was unable to be get published in that and no uh, definitely no publisher was going to uh, publish it uh, uh, he, no one does not want to destroy his business so therefore Thomas Hardy uh, used to be rejected by such uh, publications uh, if he wished to remain in business dared to mention not to mention and mostly Thomas Hardy was uh, writing of the uh, against the theme of marriage means he was um, um, more a believer of free sex so such cannot be practiced in society though man is free but not a free above and beyond the religion religion also plays some roles uh, in his life Hardy explores blind passions and unwise marriages and as his relationship with his own wife became increasingly strained, even questioned the marriage itself. Means Thomas Hardy basically questioned. Um, here now we see the Western Union, uh, sorry Western world into, in, into, into this modern situation where um, consent of the two uh, individuals is important rather than the uh, and marriage celebrations so but Hardy was living some two uh, uh, one one hundred years before so it was not possible at that time uh, so in test marriage is an arbitrary law of the society which is which has no profound foundations in the nature and in Jude's obscure it has been a sordid contract based on the material convenience his career as a novelist may be said to begin with the anonymous publication of his novel Desperate Remedies in 1871. The plot has a lot of Gothic elements in it, although Hardy characteristic, characteristically rejected the supernatural. Under the Greenwood, it was his very, uh, very first novel. That's very simple one. is a tale of the rustic life where a woman a girl forgot his handkerchief and the lover comes and uh, he hand over it handkerchief to uh, that girl and later on they fell in love a woodland pastorals now we come to the Wessex means are the, his later novels Wessex is an imaginary place uh, this this land does not exist with this name uh, in England but he has imaginary created to the south which right now uh, even at the present may be of the polymoth and uh, extra because these refer to the very south of england so now we would be discussing some uh, major his novels as well and their plots and the themes as well in a very brief note far from the madden crowd is his novel in this novel, Tar Hardy has used the first term, used the Wessex. Gabriel Oak is the very uh, um, is the central character of this novel, in which uh, he 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 was a countryman and he was in love with uh, Bathsheba Everdeen, and they moved towards the jungle where they fell in love with one another, and they ultimately eventually marries. Yeah whom he marries after a disastrous marriage to Troy. Uh, this story also happens in the uh, settings of the Wessex, which may be Thomas Hardy's may, um, majorly native town Dorset. 
Then is the story of the return of the native. This is the tragic love story of a mother's son and a wife. Yeah. Uh, uh, almost all his fictions and his exemplary simple in the plot that's the conflict of a marriage uh, means uh, the, the hero of this novel return of the natives uh, gets married against the will of his mother then is the mayor of castle bridge it's very simple uh, uh, story of the mr henchard uh, who was drunk uh, in an affair and he sells his wife and later on uh, his wife um, Elizabeth sorry Susan and Elizabeth James return from their husband and they uh, and he was considering uh, the Elizabeth uh, it, it was not actually his daughter but he was considering it, it as his daughter uh, and later on uh, when the Elizabeth came to know that uh, Mr. Henchard is not her real father and he was pretending him uh, are different lies uh, so she used to uh, get married against the will of Mr. Henchard and actually Mr. Henchard killed himself by um, traveling a lot in this novel Hardy reflects the new spirit of science and industry uh, though uh, Castor Bridge was unaffected by this industrial manufacturing, but however, uh, it was moving beyond that countryside uh, scenes. However, it is not likely many manufacturing towns that were springing up. It maintains an intimate relationship with the surrounding countryside. It tells the story of the Henchard, a man who attempts to escape his past and whose past actions come down to destroy him. Hardy rejects the convention that good qualities will lead to the prosperity and bad ones to ruin. Character is the fate. Uh, but not in the Christian sense that the people get what they deserve. Means uh, actually he was of the view that character is, is, is not, is more uh, some sort of responsible uh, for uh, its fate and that character is controlled by the god I mean nature man's nature uh, is likely prone to the destruction then is the character of the Tess of the dear Willie. Tess was the major uh, pure woman she was living uh, in a countryside area she she wo works as a dairy milk but one of her uh, her fa forefathers her father um, have uh, have a discovery that was a some sudden discovery that they have a very noble lineage and they uh, got posted on it in the preface he wrote a novel is an impression not an argument so an intense study of human nature personal emotions and the meaning of man's existence they have been dealt in this novel uh, means uh, from personal emotions means jealousy love consideration love thirst all these has been it tells the story of a country girls whose parents discover that they have they are related to a noble family she is seduced by one of the members of her, uh, this family Alec dear Bowley, and has an illegitimate child who dies later on Tess eventually finds work as a dairy maid in a peaceful and rural setting but continues to be hunted by her past uh, means uh, her uh, sexual relations with Alec. She falls in love with Angel Clare and later on she also writes uh, a letter uh, to Angel Clare to, to making him sure that she she has already been raped uh, and had son and uh, her son had died. But that letter is not received by Angel Clare and he get married. Uh, later on when he come to know he leaves her uh, marries him without uh, confessing her past when he learns the truth he des deserts her and she ends up living with Alec again he told her that Angel would never take take her back again but when Tess discovers that he lied to her she kills him this was very her natural emotions she is briefly reunited with 
angel but justice must be done and she is hanged because uh, she is murdered uh, she is killed as a murderer of Alec so in such a way the tragedy of Tess a pure woman which was this title was Thomas Hardy given at the very last moment of the publication of the novel is also the story of pure Wessex from which she comes both are corrupted and betrayed by the modern world means uh, Tess of the Derberville and uh, uh, Jude the Obscure as well. Now we see the Jude the Obscure's Hardy's last novel. Uh, it tells the story of a country boy who leaves his village and goes to Christ Minister hoping to study at the university. So Jude, uh, he has married a coarse, sensual girl who leaves him and goes to Australia and her name was Arabella. Jude falls in love with his intellectual cousin, Sue Bridehead. Actually, cousin marriage was not permitted and even, it, even it's not right now permitted in the Christianity. So, Hardy's Jude the Obscure remains in the conflict between the love and the marriage means he he was in love with Sue Bridehead but due to the marriage institution institution of the marriage proposed by the Christianity he was unable to marry to Sue Bridehead he was unable to pursue his love he brings up his son with Arabella and they are they have children themselves now. so it means here uh, they, they were having illegitimate sons and one son from Ella, Arabella he was having but Arabella has left him Arabella's love and they were very much criticized by the society that they are having illegitimate uh, son sons so ultimately uh, the son of Arabella uh, kills uh, himself as well as the, uh, his step uh, brother and the sisters and he leaves a note that done because we are too many means we are creating a, uh, too many harm for you for your familiarity and uh, we are uh, bringing grace to you therefore he kills he finally hangs his step brother and sister leaving a iconic note be done because we are too many in the end Jude kills himself by walking in a bad weather Jude's tragedy lies in that he is not an ordinary man what brings him down or as all is all his intellectual and ambition he is trapped between physical and the intellectual between the social property and unconventional between one class and other class we, we, we come to know that uh, everyone has to be moving between these situations between the religious beliefs and the free thinking between the old world and the new world these have been the uh, phenomena of everyone uh, his f from writing his far from the madding crowd to the very last novel Jude the Obscure we see that there is a period of 21 years but in this period he has growing a, sh a growing sh pessimism pessimism is that that one uh, when one's see the life in a very negative sense but we see that Hardy was not we, we, we may not charge Thomas Hardy as a pessimist we may call him as a meliorist a revolutionary you know um, even though I am going uh, not to defend his pessimism but I am um, I am of the view that it's not pessimism or uh, optimism it was just his own philosophy towards life so philosophy that cannot be can that can never be the negative or the positive after Jude's sons little father time has killed his half brothers and his sisters Jude reflects upon that the coming universal wish known to the last generation not to live means as uh, for example we, we are uh, living right now so after three or four gener fourth generation, they were not going to know we people. So Jude wished to live like that, that my, uh, I should not be remembered to the, my last generation. 
Hardy's later heroines and the heroes such as Tess and the Jude are conspicuously alone. They are individuals isolated from the rest of the society because they reject conventional patterns of behavior and the belief. So Hardy was of the view that when one man moves beyond the conventional values and believes his destruction is justified and justified to happen. Tess has born an illegitimate baby. Jude lives an unmarried union with his cousin Sue Bridehead. But their tragedy is not just as a result of their breaking of, th of the society rules. Uh, they, they have both broken their own roots. Means coming uh, from their roots was a very destructive one for them. Left the rural communities of their birth and so lost their touch with nature. So Thomas Hardy was of the view that w once when a man uh, loses his uh, roots and uh, um, moves from the, uh, rural communities or the communities of their birth to where they, they, they have not been since their birth and uh, then nature punish them and they are destroyed. So in the next lecture we would be discussing some other aspect of Thomas Hardy. Up to that, goodbye.